In this example, we are going to apply the node voltage method to solve a circuit containing a current controlled current source. In this given circuit, we have two ideal independent sources, an independent voltage source and an independent current source. And this component here, which is highlighted in green, this is the dependent source. We can see that the dependent source has an arrow inside its symbol. So this signifies that this dependent source is a dependent current source. And its magnitude has this current I1. So this means that this dependent source is a current controlled current source. Let's look at, let's apply node voltage method to solve this circuit. So first we need to identify essential nodes. So recall that essential nodes are nodes, are points in the circuit where three or more circuit elements meet. So in this given circuit, we have one, two, and three essential nodes. Note that for this node, this whole bottom conductor is one node. We need to select one of these nodes to be a reference node. So in this example, we can ground this bottom essential node. And now we are ready to start applying Kirchhoff current law to the remaining nodes. So let's label the node voltages as V1 and V2. And for systematic application of node voltage method, Assume all branch currents are flowing away from the node. So each of these nodes has four branch currents. And now we can write the KCL equations at these nodes. So first looking at node one, this branch current through the six ohm resistor, we can use Ohm's law to write an expression for this. So we follow the direction of this branch current. The end where this current is entering the resistor is assumed to be at higher potential. And the end where the current leaves is assumed to be at lower potential. So this branch current is V1 minus voltage at this side. And the voltage at this side is 50 volts because we have the ideal independent voltage source directly connected between ground and this point. So this gives us V1 minus 50 over 6. Through the 8 ohm resistor, it's V1 minus 0 over 8. So we get V1 minus 0 over 8. Through the 2 ohm resistor, the branch current is V1 minus V2 over 2. So we get V1 minus V2 over 2. This last branch current, we can see that we have a current controlled current source in this branch. So the magnitude of this branch current must be equal to the magnitude of the current source. However, we can see that the assumed branch current direction is opposite to the direction of the current source. Hence, we get minus 3i1 is equal to 0. We repeat the process at node 2. So this branch current through the 2 ohm resistor, now we treat this end where the current is entering as higher potential and this point as lower potential. So this branch current is given by V2 minus V1 over 2. Through the 4 ohm resistor, we get V2 minus 0 over 4. This branch current is in the same direction as the current source. So this branch current is given by plus 3i. And then this last branch current, we have a current source in this branch. So its magnitude must equal the magnitude of the current source. And because of the different directions, we get minus 5 is equal to 0. 
Next, we need to write the dependent source constraint equation. So we need to express this variable I1 in terms of the node voltages. I1 is indicated here. It's the current flowing through the 6 ohm resistor. So we can just apply Ohm's law to this resistor to write the term for I1. So this gives I1 is 50 minus V1 over 6. Hence, we have three equations and we have three unknown variables, V1, V2, and I1. And these equations can be solved to obtain the solution. We can use Mathematica to solve these linear equations. And using the Mathematica solve command, we can easily obtain the solution which is shown here. Hence, the obtained solution is V1 is equal to 32 volts, V2 is 16 volts, and I1 is 3 amps. After solving the equations, we can solve for the circuit variables. In this case, we have to find the power associated with the dependent source. So let us assign reference polarity as follows. So the power associated with the current control current source is the product of the voltage drop and the current. So with this reference polarity, the voltage drop across this dependent source is V1 minus V2. So we get V1 minus V2. This is the voltage drop. And the current is the magnitude, which is 3I1. We need to use passive sign convention to decide the sign of the power calculation. We can see that this current is entering the terminal marked negative. Hence, we need to use the power formula with a minus sign. Finally, just substitute values. So this gives minus 32 minus 16 and 3 times 3. So this is minus 144 watt. This answer is negative because this signifies that this dependent source is actually supplying or generating power in this circuit. We can confirm our answer by simulating the circuit in PSPICE, which is shown here. In PSPICE, the current controlled current source is available as part name F poly. And here we are using the part name bubble to efficiently connect the dependent source in the circuit without overlapping connecting wires. And when we simulate, the node voltages come out 32 and 16 volts and also the current comes out 3 amps as we calculated. The circuit can also be simulated in LTSPICE which is shown here. In LTSPICE the current controlled current source is available as part name F. In order to properly configure this part name we need to connect a zero magnitude independent voltage source in the path which has the controlling current and then we can configure this dependent current source by entering these values here as shown. When we simulate we can obtain the solution and in order to make sense of this solution if I hover the cursor over the dependent current source in the bottom left corner of the screen we can see that LT Spice is saying that the power dissipation is minus 144 watts as we calculated and also the node voltages are 32 volts and 16 volts so this reconfirms the solution